and welcome to this week's video. Do you know why I like welcome you in? It's like I'm welcoming you into my classroom, which I guess in a way is true because I'm teaching you something. Uh, today I'm sharing with you guys how I made this pinafore corduroy dungaree thing. I think dungarees are the shorts, um, which are a little bit trickier to make. So I went ahead and drafted up this pinafore pattern. Um, I'm not going to include how I drafted up the pattern. I'm just going to leave a link down in the description box to my blog, which has um, just patterns. There's nothing fancy on there. Um, so yeah, that's how you guys can get the pattern. Click on the link and you will be shown how to draft basically the pattern that I use um, in the video. I'm really happy with the way that I'm communicating the drafting to you guys because if I include it in the video, it like adds on so much more time. Um, and if I link it onto the blog, it's really easy for you guys to follow. And you also learn a little bit about drafting and yourself, which is kind of fun. Um, there are a few things I forgot to mention in the intro, which I will include now. Uh, you will need Taylor's chalk for marking up the buttonholes and also a hammer for the buttons. Now there are like three things that I've done on this set that you don't have to do. Like if you don't want to do the pocket, if you're a bit more of a beginner sewer, you can just not do the pocket. If you find buttonholes hard, you can just put a seam in the back and put a zip closure. Um, and if you don't, can't get your hands on this dungaree, um, I think it's actually called a bib set, um, this closure here, then you could just do like a little tab and knot the fabric together so it's adjustable. Uh, so there are ways of making this simpler, but we're going the like the full hog and I'm showing you guys how I make this. Um, I hope you guys enjoy. And yeah, I'll show you how I styled it. and all the information about how to draft it will be on the blog. Uh, it's incredibly easy for those of you who are wondering, is it gonna be hard to draft? No, it's not. Uh, I only used about a meter and a half of fabric in the end, but I would advise getting about two meters. Obviously, if you're smaller, get less. If you're bigger, get more. Your pattern will determine how much fabric you need. Uh, thread, snips, scissors, a bib and brace set is what it's called. If you can't get your hands on a bib and brace set, you can always just do what I said and um, add a little tab at the top instead of where the button is um, and tie it. And then I got a packet of buttons. Um, you don't have to use buttons, like I said, you can do like a zip closure, but I just think the buttons match the bib and brace set and I just really like the way that it finished off the entire look. So now we just want to fold our fabric in half and lay our pattern out. Our center front and our center back are on the fold. So go ahead and place them on the fold and just figure out the best way to lay up your fabric. As you can see, I've done the center back first and the center front. Then I've done my pockets, um, my little yoke, side yoke things. And later on, I will be doing my strap. Um, but yeah, basically you just want to get the best usage of your fabric at this point in time. pattern 
ready to be sewn or overlocked or whatever needs to happen next. So the first thing I'm going to work on is my straps. I want to pin them together as you can see me doing now just to make sure everything stays in place. Then I want to work on my side tabs. Now I'm pinning and stitching the curved edge first. Um, if any of this is confusing, trust me it'll make sense as the video goes along. But yeah, so I'm pinning those in place. We've got two of those side tabs. And lastly, before we remove the pattern, you want to make sure you snip in your notch. Now the notch is the point where we finish stitching the side seam together essentially. So this is what our fabric pattern looks like at this stage. I'm getting ready to overlock the side seams on the center front and the center back. Now for those of you who don't have an overlocker like myself, you can simply replace any overlocking step you see me doing with a wide zigzag. So just hop on your sewing machine, put the stitch length to like a really short stitch length, like a 1 or a 1.5, and pop it to like a really wide zigzag, and basically that'll just catch the raw edge, which essentially is all an overlocker does, it just stops the fabric from fraying. So once all of that's overlocked, I want to start work on my tabs and my pockets. Now my tabs are the way that I am finishing and closing the garment. The tabs stop people from seeing your underwear, um, they're basically what we attach the buttons to. They are a very important part of the closure. So I've got them pinned good side to good side, I'm using my foot as a guide to make sure I get that perfect one centimeter seam allowance, and I'm stitching that curved edge. Then I'm going to hop over to my iron, uh, trim back the seam allowance, press it open, and then fold it back over so I've got two perfect little tabs ready and raring to go. Now we do want to finish the top edge of the tab because we don't really want any excess seam allowance sticking out. I don't want to see an overlocked edge. I want it to be really nice and flat and flush so go ahead and do that and then I always use my scissors to poke out the little corners. So that's what the tab should look like now ready to be overlocked in the next step but first we want to press our pockets. Now I'm just going to fold over the overlock and give that a press at the top ready to be top stitched and now I'm going around as you can see and I am pressing over the seam allowance this just makes it really easy when we place the pocket ready to be pinned in place I don't have to battle with my seam allowance it's already pressed and ready to go I just have to place it down and pin it in place so now we want to look at attaching our side tabs to the center back of the skirt. So first things first, I want to overlock that raw edge that's left on the side tab and take it over to our center back pattern and start pinning it in place. Now, you can't see it from here, but I have pinned a centimeter down from the top. We need that centimeter because we're gonna be overlocking it and top stitching it later on. Uh, so jump back on the sewing machine and using our foot as a guide, I have stitched one centimeter in from the raw edge. There you can see the one centimeter allowance that I've left at the top and now I'm not going to slow this next part down because I really want you guys to be able to see what is going on but essentially now we want to leave the side tabs out of that seam the side seam that we're about to stitch so you can see I've folded that out against its salvage um, and I've found the side notch put a little pin in there so I know where I'm starting and I'm finishing um, and yeah, then I'm gonna stitch my side seams. So if this is confusing, it'll make sense when you're stitching it. Um, but yeah, just make sure you pull this side tab out of the seam. edges which we need to fix up so go ahead and overlock your center back at the top the side front panels and the hem um, and once we've done those we're going to work on finishing our neckline so I decided to add a two centimeter seam allowance at the top because I knew I was going to be putting those buttons in place so go ahead and grab a tape measure and measure that in place so you know you've got that perfect edge pin it and hop on the sewing machine and give
give it a nice little top stitch. Uh, the same goes for our pockets. So we just want to top stitch that raw edge in place and then come back to the front of our pinafore and again with a tape measure make sure it's all nice and straight and pin the pocket in place. I forgot to mention this but if you wanted you could obviously put more pockets on like two pockets in the pack or like one big pocket in the front but I didn't like the way that looked I just decided to do one singular pocket in the front and surprisingly it's actually come in handy I've already used it to put my phone in um but I digress so once you've stitched the pockets in place you then want to flip over and top stitch that side front seam on either side and then look to work on our straps now the straps are a little bit frustrating in the regard that calico is incredibly hard not calico sorry um corduroy is incredibly hard to turn out so the way that I stitch the straps is uh, finishing off one end and then stitching down either side. I forgot to mention this before, but um, always backstitch, especially when you're doing straps, um, because there's a lot of pressure on the stitching when you are turning it around the right way. And then you can see here, I am trimming off all of the excess seam allowance on either side and essentially turning it through by hand. Now I do have little machines like a willow loop and a special stick that I use to turn through straps, um, but the fabric was so thick that I couldn't use any of that. Um, so basically just time and perseverance, uh, taking your time to push it through the proper way. So now that the straps are finished, essentially I want to look at the garment as a whole on my body to make sure that the straps aren't too long or too short. Uh, so whether or not you've got the little tie closures at the front like I was talking about in the intro, or you've gone ahead and purchased the bib closure like I have, uh, we want to throw the buttons on now and um, put the clasp in place. So I'm just gonna leave this footage slow or like normal speed so you guys can see how I threaded my bib closure because I actually had to YouTube it because I couldn't figure out how to like how it became adjustable but anyway this is how you do it um, and then the next step is to look at the front of our um, dungaree set and figure out where we want um, the button to go the button is what is going to dictate where the strap sits so as you can see here I'm just gonna grab a pin and throw it in place where I want the button like exactly want the button to sit now this is like a really weird way of doing a closure I've never done a button closure like this before where you don't sew it you like nail the button in place um, so yeah you just want to make sure everything is nice and even at this point in time and basically just ram the pointy end through the fabric it takes a few seconds to wiggle it through and then you will need a hammer to hammer the top of the um, jean button down I tried so many times like pushing it with my hands uh, but it didn't work so I had to go ahead and find a hammer and hammer that baby in place Oh my gosh, I've just noticed that I have a line from where I wear my elastic sewing cushion. So I've just pinned the side seam up just the once here, so it's um, gaping a little bit right now. But um, now I'm just looking at the fit in regards to do I want it to sit higher or lower. So once you've figured out what your strap length is, we want to attach it to the centre back of the garment. Now, as you can see here, I'm just finding the strap point. So I found the centre back and then I folded in each side seam to find exact point where I want to put my straps um, you by no means have to do the crossover like I have I just like it when the dungaree straps cross because otherwise they want to fall down all the time like whenever I wear my dungarees and they go because I have a pair that go straight back oh they always fall down and it's so frustrating so that's why I've done the crossover like this but you might by no means have to uh, it is a little bit trickier because you have to pin and stitch them on an angle otherwise you get this weird little fold 
all the tuck in the fabric. So go ahead and pin that and then trim and overlock the excess strap. There'll be about like 10 to 15 centimeters of strap that you aren't going to need, which is totally fine. They're still adjustable at the front, don't forget. Um, and then I'm top stitching the strap in place, making sure that I do it about 0.5 down and then I get to finish the edge. I love, I love this part of a garment, like getting to top stitch the side front, which I don't think I filmed, and the center back down. It's literally like a finished garment now and all we have to do is the buttons or our closure, whichever closure that is you decided to do. Um, yeah, so this is what the garment looks like now and we are going to work on our buttons. I'm really not that precious when it comes to button placement. Uh, a really easy way to figure out how the buttons are going to look and work out your spacing is to place the buttons down upside down on that little side placket um, and have a look at roughly where they're going to sit. I think I spaced mine out about six centimeters in between each other and I think I went down 1.5 centimeters from that top raw edge. Now just make sure when you are putting the jean buttons in that you have forced the back through the right way so make sure you don't push it through the outside and then have the button facing inward if that makes sense because I almost did that um, and it's just the same way that we attached um, the top of the button before just placing it down and hammering it in place um, so yeah this is what the closure looks like basically what I'm doing here is working out where the button the front of the button hole should sit so I've pinned the placket down and I've pinned the center front Front panel in place and as you can see I am pinning either side of the button to make sure that I'm making a buttonhole that's wide enough. Now just a little tip with buttonholes, um, like smaller is always better than bigger. You can always make a buttonhole bigger, you can always dip into it more um, but you can never take away a cut. So I always like to make sure I'm one or two millimeters smaller in the length measurement than the actual button itself because the fabric will stretch. And then I measured in 1.5 centimeters from that raw edge and drew a little line with my invisible marker that washes out and I'm gonna go ahead and hop on my domestic sewing machine at home and basically stitch my buttonhole. Now every domestic sewing machine will have an automated buttonhole um, setting. All you have to do with the buttonhole setting is change your stitch length. I change mine down to like 0.5 or like 0.2 so pretty much zero um, and then you literally just turn it from one two three four five so step one will be stitching down one side step two will be um, like stitching either side at the end stitch step three will be stitching back up the other side of the button step four will be stitching either side of the buttonhole at the other end so it's an automated process I would highly advise giving it a go on like a raw bit of sample fabric before if you've never done a buttonhole before um, yeah just just get some excess fabric and have a play around but essentially that's it then I'm going to go ahead and cut the buttonhole out um, do not be shy it's I always hate like I hate cutting buttonholes because I'm terrified like oh my gosh what if I like sewn it wrong but you just have to throw yourself headlong in and cut the fabric just be careful you don't cut the buttonhole stitching so that is it that's how you make the dunkery set I think I will just include a little clip at the end here of me wearing it I am so happy with how it looked and I hope you guys enjoy it about that why is it that when you do something as like silly and insignificant as cutting your hair or coloring your hair or piercing your ears or like getting like a tiny tattoo that makes you feel like a whole nother person 